saw the submission come through, I started geeking out and asking everybody, who is this guy? Would you? So I'm, I'm looking forward to this talk. Right? Just turn it over to you. accepted here and she's like man that's kind of a long drive and I was like oh what no 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 yeah Charlotte uh, and so, uh, so <laughs> which is not Charlottesville so uh, so that's kind of how I got here um, and I'm super excited to uh, 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 be well, here. You made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so today we are going to talk a little bit about oh we're So today we're, we are we are uh, going to talk about LTE security. Um, there is a much longer eight-hour class I, I have developed up about uh, GSM, UMTS, and LT uh, and LTE. Um, but this is basically a small and quick, uh, dirty intro to LTE networks and LTE security. And we are really going to uh, look at it from a uh, standards-based perspective. Um, you see a lot of different uh, security claims about uh, about LTE, and there was one that was really, really bothering me, and that was the, this whole notion of end-to-end -end LTE so, so security. Uh, people were, were basically saying that you know LTE is in, is is encrypted from start to uh, finish. So uh, I'm going to show some of the uh, the, uh, the uh, standards later and show why that's probably not true. Um, and you can make your own uh, uh, judgments, but I'm just showing you the, uh, the uh, standards and uh, basically providing some evidence about my security claims. Um, so we are we are going to to uh, talk about different cellular standards, important cellular uh, concepts. Uh, LTE network architectures, the security architecture, and then I'll provide some uh, some stuff for some further some further reading. So I am Josh Franklin from DC 27. I'm totally six three. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I do I do work at a, a NIST. I I uh, focus in public uh, safety networks, uh, mobile security, hardware, fruits of uh, trust. Uh, and uh, electronic voting. Um, so uh, that's kind of all of the stuff I work on. So what is LT, LT, uh, LTE? That is the uh, the uh, long-term ev evolution. That is the fourth. Uh, it, I like to say four. It, it's four G. Whatever. Whatever that means. Um, it's uh, basically being deployed world world uh, wide. Um, uh, it's really, really nice that we're starting to have it a nice worldwide cellular standard. Be be before uh, it was kind of fractured, you had uh, GSM, CD CDMA, Europe really, really focusing on one, US sort of having our own little fight about one, and then we had whatever Japan was uh, doing. Um, yeah, so uh, 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 LTE is super, super cool. It's probably here to stay for a long time, and so it's uh, it's definitely worth your uh, time in uh, in uh, picking up some uh, some LTE knowledge here. Um, LTE is is basically always e e evolving. There's a standards group called 3GPP that uh, that actually develops these uh, uh, standards, and they uh, drop new releases, which is basically we have you know. 400 documents, and we're just going to stop editing the stop stop editing them now, and that's called a, a freeze or a release. And so, uh, 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 LTE release 12 is actually coming out in December 2014. Um, there, you know, there there's uh, going to be you know LTE advanced, and then what is it? LTE B is what I I uh, hear re, re, uh, referred to, and basically every new Drop uh, has you know different features um, and adds new. Gotcha. 
Um, <laughs> 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 so, cellular so, uh, standards. Um, so, 3GPP is the uh, standards body that is, that is actually developing these uh, uh, standards. The same standards body did both uh, GSM and UMTS. These are com completely open and uh, 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 viewable standards. It's not like it's not like ISO where you have to pay you know 45 francs or you know, Swiss francs to look at or or or, or, or uh, whatever it is. 3GPP is actually made of six different standards development organizations um, that are uh, basically from different parts of the whole world. Um, you see Arab there. Uh, Addis is the uh, is North Americans. Uh, you see Etsy there also, and that's uh, 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 Europe's. And Etsy does a lot of the uh, crypto standards, and so a lot of the uh, the uh, crypto is basically going. To have, um, uh, organizations, 3GPP2, which is the most confusing name in the whole world, uh, develops CDMA um, and their whole their whole line. And there's also the, uh, the uh, WiMAX form, which de 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 developed WiMAX. Um, 3GPP2, just to add you know, a quick uh, a note, was developing a CDMA variant of, um, of 4G, uh, and it was called UMB. And thankfully, they uh, stopped. And so you know, America's all moving towards the same tech technology there. Yeah. Um, a note on 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 all of, of this. Uh, 3GPP has technical reports, which are kind of more like book reports and you know analyses. And then there there's actual technical specifications, which are re requirements documents. You'll probably have to read both. Um, cellular standards use lots of jargon um, and and uh, uh, abbreviations frequently. Um, nested acronyms are common, and this is one of the fun things. Uh, I have found a three, a three depth nested acronym. I was, you know, I'm really, really curious if anyone else has uh, seen any, you know, anything that goes uh, f uh, further. So for instance, uh, GRAN stands for GPRS, Evolution Radio Access Network, and GPRS stands for like uh, General Packet, I, f I forget what, what, G what GPRS technically uh, uh, stands for. So I've seen four of those though. And so, you know, uh, let me know if you find anything deeper. Open challenge, open challenge. Um, so packets and circuits, previously, uh, um, any voice tech, t like basically any voice technology was uh, basically using a, a circuit for, for communication, which is basically fixed, fixed uh, uh, bandwidth, you know, guaranteed bandwidth. Um, uh, and, you know, that, that actually happened with uh, the uh, PSTN and, and it happened with uh, GSM and, and uh, UMTS. And so basically if you wanted data, you had to have distinct data networks. And so you had uh, GSM uh, talking, sorry, a GSM voice uh, traffic going to the uh, core network. And then you had a distinct uh, GPRS packet switch network that had to uh, converge on the core network. Uh, and so LTE is really, really different there. Uh, LTE is completely packet based, um, which is really, really interesting. Um, it, uh, there is VoLTE, which is voice over LTE. Um, uh, uh, sorry, VoIP over LTE, um, which is another. That's a third. That's a third level nested acronym, right? <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so so a VoIP is but is but one way of doing voice over over LTE. There are a bunch of of others. Um, right now, if you do make a call on LTE on LTE, you are most likely falling, falling back to either CD, CDMA, GSM, or, or uh, UMTS. Um, so it's not actually implemented nationwide yet. Um, uh, so the big lesson here is LTE is completely IP based, which actually uh, means that uh, once you, uh, like you can do a lot more with, with LTE networks now that it, like now that all the uh, the different offensive tools, you know, are all TCP/IP, uh, you know, you know, packet-based basically, whereas it's very, very different in the uh, past. The cellular standards. This is how I think of it. You have 3GPP circuit uh, switched, which you see the uh, the uh, the uh, GSM 2G tech, and you see the the UMTS 3G tech there in that one. Uh, column, you have the uh, 3GPP packet switched, um, which is uh, GPRS Edge, HSPA,
family. There's a, there's a bunch of those. And then LTE. Uh, 3GPP2 has CDMA1, 2000, EVDO, uh, the now dead UMB, and YFAX is, uh, YFAX, YMAX is quickly dying. Um, and uh, because basically Sprint uh, invested heavily in that up, up front and they are now transitioning to, to uh, LTE. These are the primary documents that you should basically be aware of, and I would just recommend reading the first three if you're interested. Um, it's not too difficult. That's probably 200 pages. You know, you've probably read longer books in ninth grade, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, these are, you know, this is just a, a quick little collection here. We're going to zoom in here, and mostly we're going to be discussing uh, 33.401, and that is the specific version that I used for this presentation. Um, this is the primary LTE security architecture document. Um, and you can, for the most part, read the first uh, 20 pages uh, uh, without much difficulty. And that's probably where the most Im 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 important portion is. So, um, you know, I'll give it a quick look. Um, it's really confusing to, d to download these uh, uh, standards. FYI, they're going to be downloaded in a, 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 a zip file, and that's the only way. You have to then double click on, on that and then open it up. It's super awful. So just FYI, uh, with some instructions. Uh, <laughs> so here's the big picture, in case you, you like uh, really haven't looked at uh, cellular networks be before. Um, so mobile devices connect to a base station, which is those giant and 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 ten in the uh, sky, which connects to a core network, which is basically run by Verizon, AT&T, uh, AT Sprint, uh, which then you know connects to the, to the internet or or uh, other cellular networks or um, uh, or the uh, the uh, public switched telephone network. Um, the uh, portion uh, between just the base stations is called the uh, radio access network, the uh, RAN, and you're going to see that term kind of be evolved. There is a, a GRAN, a UTRAN, and EU TRAN, uh, and so uh, RAN, you know, just 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 be be aware of that. That is a, a collection of, of of basically base stations. Um, as we said, base stations are permanent cellular sites. Oftentimes, they are di dis disguised, which is kind of funny when you find one of one of uh, those. They sometimes look like rocks, um, or like uh, they like put trees around them, so you don't really know that they're uh, there. Um, sometimes they can, you know, run off of gas, like gasoline, uh, if they're like like way high up in the uh, the uh, the uh, mountains. Um, uh, it's just you know interesting when you when you come across one. Uh, Next time you do take you know take take a look and, and just you know look at the different types of uh, uh, locks and just be aware. Um, so base stations uh, sometimes co 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 locate different uh, 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 carriers on the same uh, uh, base station. So you might have AT uh, AT&T buying time from Sprint or uh, buying time or space from. Uh, 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 Verizon. So a, a base station doesn't necessarily have to be just one, one uh, company. And base stations are often, well, base stations are connected back to the uh, the uh, core network via a link called the uh, backhaul. Kind of pointed to it there. And that backhaul interface sometimes is uh, fiber, sometimes it's satellite, uh, sometimes it's microwave. It all depends on what. Uh, T1 well. Sorry. T1 well. Most definitely T1. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's basically however we, we can get the information from the base station back to the core network. Uh, mobile de devices, your, your typical mobile device, uh, and, and whenever someone talks about mobile devices, they want to take out their phone and show you, right? Uh, and I really want to right now. For some reason, I know you all know what a freaking phone looks like. Uh, uh, so uh, my, my mobile de de device has anywhere from like four to six different uh, 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 radios in it, um, you know, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, uh, 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 you know, possibly a bunch of different uh, cellular uh, radios, um, and so j just just kind of be be aware of of, of that. Um, uh, in in LTE terms, bless you, uh, uh, a phone is called a UE, a, a uh, user equipment. Um, and this uh, this uh, user e e equipment uh, has a a UICC, which is often thought of as a SIM a SIM a SIM card. Uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, UICC is actually running an application on on, on top of it called the uh, the uh, the uh, 
the uh, USIM. Uh, and so that's just sort of a big uh, difference from a couple years back. Um, uh, SIM and USIM are kind of used interchangeably, but they are very, very different nowadays. Um, subscriber identity, um, MC, you've probably heard this when you're basically hearing about stingrays or you know, MC catchers. Uh, MC is basically your, uh, on the cellular network, it is uh, uh, your personal I I identity. Uh, it defines who you are. Um, it is a 15 digit number uh, stored on the, uh, the uh, SIM card or USIM card, whatever. It con consists of three of, uh, values, MCC, MNC, MSIN. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, a lot of times, uh, carriers try not to send the MCs uh, over, over the air if they don't, if they don't have to. And so th they'll uh, use a temporary identity um, called a, uh, a GUTI. I don't know if that's how it's said. That's how I say it in my head. A globally unique U U UE identity or a TIMC. Again, I'm not sure if that's how it's said. Temporary mobile subscriber I I I identity. And these are all different from your actual phone number, right? Your actual MSISDN. Um, this is what an MC looks like and how it's kind of broken up. Um, uh, it's just interesting to note that uh, uh, Europe may use a two digit value for the second thing there, for the, uh, the uh, second range. Um, yeah, this is what, the, you know, just this is what all the, the fuss is about. Um, uh, but it, uh, yeah, I mean, anyway. Um, so uh, UE identity, um, your actual phone has its own I, I, identity called the actual IMEI, the International Mobile e Equipment I, I, Identity. It is a 16 digit number. Um, you can actually look at it right now by doing pound hash 06 hash on your phone and it'll It'll probably pop right up uh, for our our uh, sorry sorry star hash zero six hash my my bad um, don't want to confuse our British friends um, uh, and the actual IMEI is often used most often used to uh, to uh, blacklist phones from a cellular network um, so so if, if if someone steals your uh, phone they can blacklist uh, uh, AT and T can can uh, can blacklist that phone from uh, uh, getting on their uh, network. It is um, it is illegal to uh, change a phone's IMEI in many in many countries for that uh, reason. I don't know about uh, our country. Um, USIM cards. These are basically and if if what. If what I read is true, this is the single most popular smart card in the whole world. Over seven, uh, over seven billion in cir circulation. Um, they actually store cryptographic keys. I mean, that's their primary duty here, right? Is they are long-term cryptographic key storage uh, in a se secure area. Um, they do house a processor that actually runs a an operating system and. Uh, and and on, on top of this operating system, there is a uh, stripped, stripped uh, down mobile, mobile version of the, uh, the uh, Java virtual machine that is used. And, and, it, and, uh, and uh, it can actually run apps. Like you can run games off your, 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 your uh, SIM card, which is kind of cool um, and will totally not be misused by anyone ever. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like we were saying here, uh, SIMs are dep deprecated. The modern term is USIM. Uh, so you may re remember CDMA did. Uh, so basically, Verizon used a soft SIM. Um, they have now basically, you know, made this huge change in their uh, network, and they are now using, uh, you know, hard SIMs now. Um, and Sprint is changing from YMAX to LTE. I already went over that. Um, here's what a SIM card looks like. Uh, there are a bunch of different types, right? Um, we're really just removing plastic for them for the most part here in this picture. Um, the the uh, the uh, yeah, I don't know, remove plastic. I don't know what that means. Um, so. Uh, the actual metal part is more or less the uh, same. The uh, contacts are a little bit different. Um, oh, uh, yeah, uh, SIMs. Um, <laughs> if you if you roll an Android, you are probably using a micro SIM. If you roll uh, an iPhone, you're probably using a, a nano SIM. Um, makes it real hard to go back and forth. Um, so LTE networking. Here's you know, here's what we're really here for. Uh, remember, it's a 4G data and voice tech tech technology. Um, it's basically split into three different portions. Any LTE network, um, uh, the actual radio network, which is called the the EU TRAN. Uh, I don't want to try and go for that giant acronym. Uh, the actual core network, the the uh, evolved packet 
core and the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, IP multi multimedia subsystem. Um, we're not going to talk about the IMS because it's kind of conf confusing and we don't have enough time here. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, you know, uh, stop me. Let me know. Um, so we we are really going to 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 focus on the interaction between the the actual phone and a base station. Um, I know this looks awful and horrible. Uh, let's talk about it for a moment, and then we'll go into a nice, pretty picture. I promise. Okay. Um, so the actual UE is the LTE d device uh, in LTE parlance, uh, base stations are called evolved node Bs, which is an awful name. Um, so E node uh, Bs or EN Bs, you will see it written three or four different different ways. Just 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 know anything with a B on the end is probably a base station. Um, that's just, you know. Uh, so the uh, the uh, mobility management entity, MME, this is a really important box on the core network. It is, uh, it is a server that is um, uh, that is uh, basically doing all the all of the authentication functions and all of the con like all of the different control signaling, allowing you on the uh, the uh, network, saying you know you, you can go here, can't go there. Uh, the uh, serving the serving gateway um, is the um, it's it's uh, basically the main uh, route that user data passes through. It's just it's just another server on the uh, their uh, network. Um, it it does do handoff. Be between other 3GPP networks. And so if you're going from AT&T LTE to Verizon LTE, then uh, if, if there was a handoff that had to be done uh, because you're going down a highway at 60 miles an hour and you have to switch from this, uh, from this base station to this base station, uh, then uh, that actual handoff would, would occur at the, uh, the, uh, the uh, serving gateway. The, uh, the uh, packet gateway, the P gateway, uh, allocates IP addresses. And so yeah, all your phones have, have nice IP ad addresses now that, uh, uh, now that you're on LTE. Um, the P gateway does hand off between LTE, oh, sorry, between 3GPP networks and non-3GPP networks. So if you were, trans like if you were handing off from AT&T LTE to Verizon CDMA, uh, then uh, that actual handoff would occur from, from the P gateway. The uh, home subscriber server and the authentication center, um, the difference between these are very min minute. I don't even talk about it. I just kind of mention them in the same thing. Um, they actually reside on the, the uh, MME, um, and they, they actually hold your long-term crypt crypt cryptographic key, K, we'll, we'll get into that, and the actual MC. Um, and then IMS, which is con confusing. We're not going to talk about that. Um, so here you can see. Uh, we have the uh, the phone, and through some awesome lightning bolt graphic, there it goes to the uh, the base station. Um, from the 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 base station control signaling is routed from the uh, base station to the MME, and as and like this is where all your all your authentication information is stored at, and the serving gateway is where all your user data is uh, is put through. Um, and so from here, we would go out to the internet or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, PSTN. And this is a, just a really basic LTE network. There's not really many, you know, there's not much to know here, um, which, is, which is nice, right? Um, so um, for communication between the phone and the, uh, and the, uh, and the E node B and then the uh, core, there are, there are uh, cellular specific protocols, as you might, as you might uh, as you might imagine, it, it's it's a cellular version of TCP/IP, right? And in, and in, in reality, TCP/IP actually is you know runs on 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 top of all of all of this, which is which is which is nice. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at uh, at some of these protocols here. Let's zoom in on the far left side. So, uh, LTE uses different communi communications planes. Prim primarily, you should just think of three. You have a, 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 a communi communications plane for user data. My phone to the base station to the core to the core to the core network. That could be voice or whatever you're looking at. Um, there is control signaling between your phone and the, the base station, right? Because the, the base station has to know where your, your uh, phone is. It has to get tracking area updates. It has to you know, do auth authentication. Uh, it has to, to, to say, hey, you're being a little bit loud. Simmer down, right? Um, and th you know, th th there's actual control signaling for that. Uh, and then there has to be control signaling from your uh, phone to the core 
network. Um, and so there's, that, and that's basically three distinct uh, uh, planes here. Um, cool. Uh, so we're going to look at, for a moment, uh, these three bottom uh, these three bottom ones. So RRC uh, basically provides control signaling be between the phone and the eNodeB. Uh, the PDCP protocol, Packet Data Conversions Protocol, uh, does uh, in encryption and, and it actually gets, uh, um, like a, it, it basically takes all these, the signaling above it and then encapsulates and then frankly just you know, encrypts it or, or, uh, or uh, in integrity protects it. The, uh, the uh, the uh, RLC, um, uh, it actually readies, readies packets to be transferred over the air interface, uh, and then the actual MAC layer does multiplexing and quality of service, and then physical, you actually have, you know, uh, 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 electronic, uh, uh, bless you, electronic uh, transmissions, you know, gallivanting over the airwaves. Um, so here are the control protocols, and, and and a lot of these protocols are sort of re repeated here, and that's and that's uh, fine. This is just how these standards documents ex explain it. Um, so you have the the control protocols, um, which is uh, NAS sec security, which is the which is the non-access stratum, super confusing name. Uh, it connects your uh, uh, like this is that uh, that uh, control signaling plane from your phone back to the core network, um, and then you see RRC there, which is control signaling from your phone to the actual base station. And then simpl simplified much more is where is what your your uh, data would would uh, traverse is just these four protocols here. Interfaces, um, that nice diagram that we had earlier. Um, every single thing, like every single interface, uh, every single connection between um, between uh, a, a a server or a a network component has its own. Uh, unique Id identifier basically, and here are the main ones that. I want you to know for LTE. Um, so, and re requirements will, will say things like the actual, you know, it'll say the X2 interface, which is between, um, between two base stations. The X2 interface has to, you know, has to have this much in, in, encryption or, you know, has to be protected by these, by these uh, means. And so what you really need to pay attention to is what's gonna confuse you is the, is the uh, S1 interface has two uh, has two separate interfaces. I don't know why they, they just didn't call them two different S1 and S2. Um, so the actual S1 MME uh, is the uh, the the control plane uh, signaling interface, and then the S1U is the user plane inter uh, is the user plane uh, information inter interface. Security, what we're all here for. Um, so there are a couple of different security mechanisms uh, in use here. Um, the actual USIM token, right, the actual hardware token. Uh, authentication and key ag ag agreement, uh, which is how your phone gets, gets authenticated onto the, uh, the, uh, the uh, network. And that's really what, what, what a, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, people at, say, Black Hat and DEF CON have been you know, breaking over, over years past. And then we have crypto. LTE get, you know, has its own... Um, you know, like basically has its own encryption and integrity uh, cryptographic algorithms. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, high level threats to LTE. There is a document, and it's it's one of those TRs, and you, you should probably go take a look at it. And just it just sort of talks about stuff we are worried about. It was the the, uh, the LTE designers, um, and so these are some of the uh, things here, right? Uh, tracking tracking I I identity physical f physical attacks on base stations, uh, manipulating con control plane or user plane data, uh, threats to um, you, like uh, basically uh, how there are like downgrade. Uh, Attacks in SSL, there are you know downgraded attacks exist in cellular networks as as well to you know uh, push you into using a weaker cipher, um, and then you know jamming. It is you know an open an open interface, and so um, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, jamming is not within the threat model of LTE, um, and you can you can basically acquire j j uh, uh, jammers for like 40, 40 bucks on eBay from. You know, it'll have some Russian characters on the uh, packages, um, but uh, yeah. So it's just interesting to know that they are not trying to to pro protect against this. Admittedly, it's a really hard, hard, hard problem. Um, so low-level threats, uh, right? I mean, um, basically, since it is open, uh, there is uh, sorry uh, because the 
the air interface is open. There are, um, uh, like, you can basically sniff the, uh, the uh, traffic possibly or do jamming attacks, sim cloning. Um, this used to be a way bigger problem where um, you would either steal someone's uh, phone and copy their SIM, their SIM card and then uh, basically uh, use their, their, their account to make long distance phone, phone calls, right? Um, uh, and nowadays, uh, more of an issue is really people um, people uh, cloning their 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 own phone and then uh, and then uh, using like using using that to spread out their wireless service to multiple to multiple people basically have one have one account and you know ten different ten different ten different lines basically right um, and I really even I, I, like even then I don't even, like I don't see that much of that happening threats to uh, privacy um, by by design I mean your phone knows where you are at all times or at the very at the, at the at the very least if you are uh, like your relation, uh, uh, like your location in, in relation to a base station, right? I mean, uh, if if your phone can talk to a base station, you're within some minimum some minimum distance b between a a unique base station. Um, and as we were saying now, like basically Sprint and AT and T and uh, Verizon, they have to operate this massive IP based network now uh, with you know basically servers on on, on the internet. Uh, and that's going to be a little bit a little bit different from uh, from from before. So the actual hardware token, USIM, UICC, uh, uh, it is more or less Id identical to what it was in UMTS, which is 3, 3G. It actually points to the same standard. Um, so it just says, hey, look that way. Um, it uh, uses an L uh, sorry, LTE uses a new hardware pr protected 128-bit key called uh, K, uh, and K is just really, really uh, like really, really Im Im important. You need to look into K. Um, uh, basically, all keys are derived from K. Uh, session keys, long-term keys, um, whatever. Uh, and uh, K never leaves your uh, phone ever. Uh, K K is, is is basically instantiated, or sorry, uh, K is derived um, or you know generated, and then it is basically stored in the core network at the MME and inside of a, a, a SIM card. And other other than than that, it is. It is never uh, it, it is never released. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, I had a nice segue. Okay, yeah. So one of the main points of this key K is for AKA. There you go. Um, AKA you know authentication and key and key agreement. This is how subscribers are authenticated to to a cellular network. Um, uh, so it's basically a, crypt a cryptographic protocol. Um, it's originally specified in that standard. Um, previous versions of, of, of uh, AKA did not do mutual authentic 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 authentication. And that's the big deal here is that, is that uh, LTE actually ties the name of the serving network. So it, it, it ties the name of basically Verizon's network into the AKA protocol. And so you are actually authenticating uh, uh, both sides. Um, you're, yeah, yeah. Um, and AKA, uh, again, this is confusing. We'll just talk about it for a second, then we'll look at the diagram. Um, uh, AKA uses authentication vectors. It's basically the main primitive in, in, inside of AKA, and it's just a bunch of different, uh, uh, a bunch of different security p parameters. Um, uh, there is a, 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 a bunch of them, but basically, uh, an, an authentic authentication vector cons consists of a response and AUTN, I don't know how people say that, authentication, AUTN, uh, a nonce, uh, a random number, and then uh, a local, uh, a, a, a session master key is how we will call that, and that is uh, CASME or KASME. Um, so it's actually not too bad, though. Um, this is a simplified version. It doesn't have any of the, uh, of the uh, error mechanisms in, in case things go wrong in it. But basically, you have your phone with the, with the uh, USIM on the, the, the left. And on the right, you have the core network, which, which has access to the HSS and, and authent authent authentication center. You can see at the top, at the top left and top right, uh, both uh, sides have access to the MC and uh, K. And so, what really goes on is that your phone sends either a temporary identity or or the MC over over the air interface to the core network. Uh, and that's the the uh, top thing there. Uh, the second step is that the MME uh, receives that information, uh, looks it up, and sends uh, and sends that information to the uh, to the authentic authentication center. Uh, cryptographic magic happens. Um, we're Basically, um, the uh, the MC and K and the serving network ID all basically generate uh, a couple of different crypto crypto 
cryptographic parameters, uh, spe specifically these. Um, the uh, the the re re response and the uh, and the uh, session key, uh, and only that information. Sorry, this whole authentic authentic authentication vector is sent to to the MME, and then only the uh, the uh, the uh, nonce and the and the authentic authentic authentication token. I I still forget what what uh, what uh, what uh, AUTN stands for. Um, that is all sent to your SIM card. Your SIM card does basically. A very very similar process as what as what goes on here to uh, to basically generate a uh, a, a signed response um, and that signed response is then sent over to the MME at the core network and if this and if this uh, and if this expected response uh, is equivalent to the signed response then someone is authenticated to the the network yes sir. They definitely do. Which means a compromise that any telco provider compromises the entire network. Um, so it that uh, so um, just because uh, it's confusing how networks are laid out, uh, but but uh, 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 basically it's not it's not all your eggs in one in one uh, 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 basket. There are there are uh, uh, yeah there are are basically multiple baskets. I'm not exactly sure um, how say. You know, AT and T l l lays out its its uh, its uh, authentic authentication centers, but uh, I would assume, and this is a complete Josh assumption here, that uh, there is basically you know maybe a North Carolina authentication center, and there's a Washington D.C., and then there's a New 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 Jersey. I have no idea. Um, I, I just don't have access to that inf to, to that in to, uh, to, to that information. But but uh, uh, basically, yes, if 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 it is all in one in one in one basket, and there's a, a leak. Mm -hmm. You could have, um, you know, the telco provided the public side, and then no one would have to, no one have to see. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually, I've actually wondered about that myself, and this is just a, another Josh thought. Um, maybe they are, um, uh, like, maybe it was just be, because the network was built in. You know, late 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 eighties, early nineties, uh, and, and they use symmetric crypto up 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 front. Or maybe uh, phones have to basically authenticate a lot. And you know, asymmetric crypto is much more, uh, sorry, is you know, not not very e e efficient. Um, again, that's just a that's just a guess on my part. Um, that's a good observation, though. Um, um, so yeah, that's how that's how you know your phone gets onto its network. Um, and earlier versions of this uh, are like they look basically. Similar to this, it's just some of the the acronyms are are different, and that uh, that uh, that uh, SNID and that uh, nonce might not be there. Um, so we don't have time to go over this. I'm running a little bit slow, um, but there is this is the the cryptographic operation that is that is uh, used to to generate the the authentic authentication vectors. Um, uh, it is a standardized. Algorithm, but it but uh, the three GPP uh, standards don't say that you have to actually use it because someone uh, like because Verizon actually owns basically your SIM card and they own the core network. They can actually use uh, you know whatever key generation and key deriv derivation algorithms they want to because they own both sides. And so as long as it works within their 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 their, their network, it's not a big big uh, deal. Uh, and this uh, standardized algorithm is French and it's called Milanage. I hope I'm not hurting that. You know, hurting someone's ears real, real bad. Um, and this is what this is uh, the actual USIM verification. I mainly made these diagrams because uh, the ones inside of these standards were super ugly, and these ones you can just take and do whatever you want with with them yourself. So, um, uh, yeah, the PowerPoint is all is all uh, is completely available. So LTE crypto cryptographic al al algorithms used for used for uh, basically uh, conf conf confidentiality and integrity protection. Um, this was there's like a there's like a long super fun history here, right? Um, like basically originally um, uh, with uh, GSM networks, uh, trying to trying to re remember exactly how it how it went. Um, it was going to be 64 bits was how far the original uh, like how long the original GSM key was going to be, 
but then the West Germans were really, were, were really worried about the East Germans and Britons didn't trust anyone's, sorry, anyone, and it, 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 it eventually kind of got nerfed um, in the, 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 the same way DES did. And so it's, uh, GSM had a 56-bit key, basically, uh, with uh, like eight, 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 eight bits of padding. Um, but in LTE, we do have 128-bit and 256-bit keys. Um, and these are, uh, these are fairly robust algorithms. They are standardized algorithms. You can go and look and, and see exactly how they are, they are, uh, they are being, sorry, how, uh, how they are defined, not how they are implemented. Um, these are all open uh, standards. You basically have EEA, which is in, you know, encryption algorithm one, and then EIA, which is you know, integrity algorithm one. And they're, uh, they're both based on SNOW 3, 3G, which is a UMTS algorithm, and then uh, the the US and you know be, me being from NIST and you know our, our uh, history with AES and all that. Um, uh, the U.S. uses, um, uh, like the U.S. basically got uh, uh, AES inside of the 3GPP standard. Um, so basically you have EEA2 e and EIA2 are basically AES and C C CTR mode and then you know, AES, uh, uh, CBC, MAC. Um, and then China uh, was kind of perturbed about this. And so they decided that they, uh, uh, that they, that they wanted their own, uh, you know, their own alg algorithm. And so now uh, Zook is, is currently being standardized and uh, it should be, uh, to my knowledge, it's not implemented, but that doesn't mean much because I don't know. How, well, I don't know anything about LTE networks in China. Um, yeah, so I just, I just don't. <laughs> um, um, and if I did, that would probably not be safe. Uh, so um, uh, right now, most keys in LTE um, are 256 bits, uh, bits uh, long, but unfortunately, only. Uh, only one, one, like there's uh, basically 128 bits of uh, uh, zeros in, in, in a lot of them, but that is being quickly uh, changed, uh, and you know uh, everyone's being proactive about that. Just you know, FYI. Um, so here's what I kind of promised, right? We're going to dip into the standards, and I'm really going slow. I thought I lie. Anyway, um, so these are the three different standardized al alg algorithms, and what it says here is that um, uh, is that. Uh, AES and Snow 3G have to be sub, sub, supported, um, but um, uh, Zook is you know you, you don't actually have to support Zook, which is which is interesting. Um, I don't know if that's going to change in the uh, the future. If you know basically Verizon and AT, if uh, Verizon and AT and T will have to support a, a Chinese uh, cipher. Um, sorry. Chinese make it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It might be built in, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the key, the key hierarchy in LTE, it's a little bit conf 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 confusing, but um, basically you have K, which again is only stored in uh, core network and SIM, and you have CK and IK, which are basically derived from uh, from uh, K, and they are basically stored in in the HSS and in the phone itself. But then you get into the actual meat of it with uh, CASME and K A S M. E. And this is the uh, this is the uh, the uh, the uh, local master key, and so basically all these other keys are derived from like uh, Casmi for the for the most part, um, and there's there's so many it's crazy. I should have put a a, a picture of what the uh, the uh, the uh, standard looks like. It looks like the most confusing circuit diagram you've ever seen if you if you're looking at at how like what the uh, the uh, key hierarchy looks at looks like you should actually go in and look at it. it it is very very comical and what you're what you uh, what you see here is that you have different keys for different purposes which is great um, but, but then you start to have different keys for different protocols which is even cooler you have a krc int i don't know why i'm just doing you have krc int here and the krc in, in, in encryption here so you have a different key for both encryption and and, and integrity and you have the the uh, the, uh, the same thing here for uh, nas uh, the non access stratum control signaling here's a sweet little uh, chart I found online and I reproduced, and I totally cited them. But um, I really like this because it just shows uh, all of the different main keys and their strengths real, real fast. Um, so signaling protection: what is actually in 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 encrypted inside of LTE? Um, uh, so as we were uh, saying, you know, um, different different communi communication paths have their own have their own keys, um, and a common claim, and this is what really 
perturbed me, I will say that word, um, uh, uh, is that uh, LTE is fully in encrypted. I've seen this in like IEEE articles. I've seen this uh, on, uh, on just like all, all, all across the internet. And that may be true, um, but it is not mandated by the, uh, the uh, standards. And so you're basically, you, you're putting your, your faith in what AT&T and Verizon and Sprint do. And they may very, it, like they may very well encrypt everything. Um, I, don't, I don't know uh, yet. Um, but uh, I just, I just, I just like to, you know, say, you know, like hammer this point, this point, this point home. And this is just a cool little diagram. Shows, you know, which keys different, different, different layers of the uh, the uh, the protocol stack are actually um, are actually protected by. Um, so we we, t we talked about NAS security. I'm going to speed up a little bit. We talked about NAS sec security here being uh, the the signaling be between uh, the actual phone and the core the core uh, the core network and uh, uh, and so that's called the the uh, non access stratum the green part is called the actual access stratum um, and they get pr protected with different with different uh, keys um, and then NDS IP uh, network do do domain system and slash IP um, this is basically using IPsec in the core in the core the core network that's the uh, standard if you want to read up on it that's like a five page standard um, it basically says you can use uh, IPsec in a certain in a certain mode uh, and uh, and then uh, you can put security gateways, which are just basically hardware, hardware IPsec appliances on your uh, your uh, network at various uh, points. Um, and uh, this is not required either. But to prove that, here we go. Um, so NAS re re requirements. So you see, uh, NAS signaling confidentiality is an operator option. Um, so the con the control. Uh, signaling is fairly important. I would have, uh, I would have at least suspected that the that the control signaling would have been would have been encrypted, um, uh, and, and it says there, you know, note one, RRC and NAS signaling confidentiality protection is recommended, um, and a big a big reason for this might be that 3GPP standards have to be de de deployed worldwide, right? I mean, they have to they have to work in all in all countries, uh, and, and in all such, such situations. Um, RRC signaling confidentiality is is an operator option. Um, and yeah, um, uh, the only thing that's really mandated here uh, in terms of uh, cryptographic protection is in, is integrity. So uh, integrity pr protection and replay protection shall be provided to NAS and RRC signaling, um, which is interesting. And uh, yeah, yeah, so basically you can think of it as the uh, the minimum in confidentiality pr protection and, and and there is there is a a a, a, a caveat that says that if you physically um, like if you don't physically pro protect your network d d devices, then then you have to in, in, encrypt. Uh, I haven't found much about what physically protecting your network d d d devices means, but if you want to go look at these, these are the uh, the, uh, the like this is the uh, standard and where you can uh, find it. Uh, before I wrap up, home home e node bees. I just wanted to let you guys know that these things exist. That these are basically femtocells or or uh, ADO cells, um, like uh, these are just basically base stations in your 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 uh, your, uh, your uh, house. Um, uh, MC MC catchers are typically some sort of femto femto cell. Um, uh, what's interesting about the actual home enode B standard is that it says that uh, that like uh, that you have to have roots of uh, trust, and so basically you have to have you know like long term crypt cryptographic key storage protected by uh, by uh, hardware um, as part of the home enode uh, enode B, and that uh, secure boot must be done, which is which is really really great. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, and then lawful interception. Just wanted to put this out there too. Um, I haven't fully investigated this yet, but there are uh, three different lawful inter interception standards that I'm aware of. Um, they're actually built into the the LTE standards, and it's basically as you can imagine. So, um, uh, you know, law law uh, law enforcement bodies can uh, you know get access to the uh, the uh, keys uh, that were that were used to uh, you know com com uh, to uh, to uh, encrypt um, someone's uh, traffic. Um, uh, hopefully, this is being this is being done to um, to make it so uh, uh, it's 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 done in the most secure way as possible. Uh, one would hope uh, that uh, like you wouldn't want lawful interception to basically make it uh, to where it was really uh, you know in, 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 like uh, the the rest of the key structure was weak or um, or you know reduce the size of a, a key. Um, so. 
that's basically all I got. Um, LTE security is imperfect and crazy complicated. Um, and compl you know, complicated things are, all, are like always really, really secure, right? Um, uh, so, uh, uh, in general, integrity and replay pr protection are mandated, not confidentiality protection. Um, and just re remember that standards provide the bare minimum level of security that must be achieved. Um, uh, telcos may, voluntary, may volun voluntarily raise the, the, uh, their security. Um, it's hard to uh, tell. So, thanks for, for having me. Um, Here's some further r r reading if you want. Go to opensecuritytraining.info and I just tweeted these uh, slides with the, uh, with the besides CL CL CLT hashtag if you want to take, take a look at them. So thanks. <laughs>